Torah has very many faces and things are very complex. And I certainly would, I think that uh, that's one of the things that really upsets me. Uh, why, why is this issue so important to me? Because the national debate has become a debate of Judaism against democracy. And, um, and Judaism says you can't rent your home to Arabs, and democracy says you have to. And, uh, and I object to that. I just object to that. I, I don't want to, like, I'll take, they have a position that can be defended through Judaism and through halakha, and, I, and it can. But I do not abandon Judaism. Uh, to those rabbis, and we have a, I have a voice in defining what Judaism is, and I'd like to argue for that voice and to show that Jew, there, we have Baruch Hashem, a very rich thousands and millenni millenniums of tradition, and many things can be proven, good things and bad things, all sorts of things can be proven from the tradition. It requires a lot of humility and a lot of, a lot of wisdom to be able to do that, I feel very humble in this place, but also uh, a need to, uh, to speak up. I, I don't want to let this cut, I can't bear to see this country saying it's Judaism against democracy. I, I think that it's Judaism, it's one view of Judaism against another view of Judaism, and democracy is a factor also, but uh, it's not Judaism against democracy. It's, uh, it's more complex. Got them there on source number five. Okay, these are the, the seven Noahide commandments. These are the seven commandments that God gave to all people. Okay, this is, I, um, I think the seven Noahide commandments are very interesting to sort of think about as the set of basic morality. What is, right, Jews, you, can, you see very clearly in this text that God doesn't, you don't have to be Jewish to be good and moral, okay? You actually, Jews have to be, keep halakha, to be good and moral. But you can still be a good person, and a good, and a non-Jew is a perfectly good person. He is michasi dei umota olam, and he merits redemption in every way, right? If he just keeps these seven mitzvot, and I think it's interesting to notice about these seven mitzvot that you actually don't have to do much. Right? You don't have to engage yourself every moment with tikkun olam. You just have to hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Okay, just it's basic. Six out of seven commandments are lo ta'ase, are things, are, are mitzvot that you just have to abstain from doing bad things. Um, so. Uh, <coughs> um, you see that the Rambab and the Gemara has very high praise for anyone for anyone who accepts upon themselves these seven commandments, um, and the, and they name this person. They use the ta the term Ger Tosha, which is a term we have very often in the Chumash. Um, I picked one verse from the Chumash. Ki yamuch achicha umata in verse uh, in source number seven. Ki yamuch achicha umata yado imach vechazak tavo ger v'toshav v'chay imach. If your kinsman, being in straits, comes under your authority and you hold him as though a resident alien, let, let him live by your side. It's a funny verse because what we're actually learning is that you have to support the Jew just like you support the resident alien. Okay, but from, from that you can deduce that what's your obligation to the resident alien? To support him, right? The same, and the same, the same as you treat the Jew, you have to treat the resident alien. Okay, um, the the, uh, the resident, we have a commandment, to help him live. Now that comes into all sorts of, uh, that manifests itself in, in many different ways, but you see, uh, it's already the beginning of what I would call membership rights, right? This is uh, human rights are to uh, 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 to have no harm done to you. Human is, membership rights is when is that I go out of my way to help you out, um, and that is the. That is very clearly in source eight um, the kind of relationship we have uh, um, with the Ger Toshav. Um, okay, the Ger Toshav, one of the central, I, the central idea of Ger Toshav means that he has residency rights. Right, that's what it means to be a Ger Toshav. He has residency rights, but not only does he have residency rights, but you have to give him good residency rights. It's not like what you did to the refugees who came 
the Jewish refugees who came from Iraq um, and Morocco, and you made them go to Yerucham and Mitzpeh Ramon and, uh, um, and, uh, um, and all, all of those things in those de development towns, you have to give them good places to live. Okay, that's the rules with respect to Gerto Shop. Um, <coughs> certainly, renting them apartments is well within the realm of our obligations um, to uh, the Gerto Shop. Um, the problem with the Gerto Shop, right, if you wanted to poke holes in this, go ahead, poke a couple holes already in my seat. Right now, I feel like, oh, so what's, what are we talking about, right? You have, we have, there's nothing to discuss. They're, they, they are smarter than that. I want you to know that it's not, it's not quite that simple. You can begin to poke holes. But you see why, I, why the anxiety that, that I felt in my first readings of Lo Tichaneim, of those passages in the Torah that we started with, are settled. Because really, Judaism is decidedly not a racist religion. Judaism doesn't want you to, or these, te these sources, let me say it like this, these sources are, uh, have a lot of anxiety about what people who have terrible, who have wicked behavior in your midst, the kinds of impact they can have on you, and they want you to create a community that is a righteous community. People who are not righteous in those ways, who don't have your norms, shouldn't be part of your community. People who do fulfill basic norms are part of your community. And even if they're not fully Jews and don't decide to take on full obligations of being part of your Jewish community, maybe they won't have all of, they, they won't have all of the, the, the intimacy of relationship that you have with your fellow Jews. You do have a level of intimacy for you that really they are part of your community and you have a set of obligations to them that are really very significant obligations, especially when you consider what we've asked of them. Right? Meaning we haven't asked them to contribute in any way to our community yet, but we have obligated, all they have to do is not violate the basic prohibitions, but we have basic obligations towards them that are really quite um, significant. This is the answer of Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem and Hillel are on the same side, right? There was a non-Jew who came to Shammai and said, convert me on the condition that you can teach, the Torah, teach me the whole Torah while I stand on one foot. And Shammai, of course, kicked him out completely, said, get out of here. When he went before Hillel, Hillel said, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. That is the whole Torah, and all the rest is commentary there of go and learn it. I think that uh, we've had it done to us before. And uh, there's plenty that's been written about what's been done to us and how it feels um, to have those things done. And part, the whole point of building a state is to build a state not only where they won't do that to us, but that we can do it better. Um, and it's so obvious uh, that uh, every first grader can know that uh, this is not the Jewish way. Um, and to that, I leave it to, to speak. <laughs> uh, personally, I think that uh, the, the declaration is a mistake. Uh, I don't think it's well argued halakhically, and uh, it doesn't move me. I think uh, what I can add, which concerns me a little bit, is I don't think Mish said this, but I think there's an implication to paint anybody who is in favor of that declaration as automatically being a racist. And I think that's a little bit overly simplistic, and I want to share with you why. So again, I'm not in support of it, but I think there's a more complex issue here that, that's, that's happening under the surface than simply, you know, uh, does Judaism hate Goyim? And I use that term deliberately. I don't think that's what's uh, under discussion here. The point is, I think that there is a conflict here. I don't think that anybody who stands up and says, we have to be concerned, or we want to make a push to create uh, neighborhoods or cities that reflect a certain cultural, religious, national identity, I don't think it automatically makes them racist. Are there rabbis who signed that that I am concerned about the way they feel about non-Jews? Yeah. I'm not here to present them all as uh, nationalists who don't, who, I, I, I think, yes, there are, there's what to be concerned about. At the same time, I don't think this issue can be reduced, uh, which I, I fear to some extent got presented, the, for, the, you know, the, the forces of light versus the forces of darkness. This issue of preferential treatment to Jews in a Jewish state, this happens and it goes on, and, 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 and there are a lot of things. I'm not in favor of giving, you know, I'm glad there's a, law of, there's a right of return for Jews who want to move here automatically, get automatic citizenship. I don't see it as racist, even though there's no question 
that Arab citizens don't enjoy that same right that Jewish citizens do. So I guess I would argue that it's complicated. It's not simple. It's not simply right versus wrong or good versus evil. At the same time, my sympathies are very much with what Misha's talking about in terms of what I want Judaism and the Jews to look like. But I think to boil it down simply to a question of good versus evil, the racist versus the good guys, uh, would be a mistake in ignoring the complexity of what's going on here.